We're going to turn our Bibles to Mark chapter 4, and uh, we're going to go over what I've gone over before in prayer uh, on the storm concept. Um, It's interesting. He gave me this very prophetically. You can read uh, different scriptures, and it'll, it'll be a story when you read it. But when he gives it to you prophetically... It comes alive and it, it goes, it almost apostles over your life. And you're like, whoa, I can see this taking place now, even though it was talking about something back then. So Mark chapter 4 um, starts out uh, with Jesus. He's beginning to teach and he's alongside of a lake, right? And he's out there um, and he's giving different illustrations. He's giving different parables. And he's in, it's just throngs of people is what it says. There's throngs of people that are, are gathering around to hear. But the people listening really close were the disciples, right? And those are the disciplined ones. That's what the word disciple means. Those are the ones that are disciplined. And he's about to disclose something. Now, we've heard this. I mean, if you've been in church at all for any amount of time, this first section of Scripture You've probably heard over and over and over, there's, there's a, a, a sower that goes out to sow seed. Then it falls on this kind of ground. It falls on that kind of ground. And, and then he breaks it down later in the chapter and shows how the different types of grounds, what they mean. And we can take a scripture like that and have that and just be like, uh-huh, yeah, I guess there's different grounds in our heart. We're going to have to work on that. I guess, okay, blah, blah, blah. But the problem is there's a phrase that he says in here, as he goes along disclosing these things, he said, I'm giving you the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Well, now we got to back everything up and read this differently. Not like the the sower went out to sow seed and here's this ground and here's that ground. I wonder what kind of ground I got. I guess I'm okay. It's like, do you want the mysteries of the kingdom of God? Now, the kingdom means um, the sphere of his rule, the way he does things, his domain. And literally, when we come to know Christ, we come to know the anointed one in his anointing. Christ is not Jesus' last name, right? We got to make sure that we know that. And so when we come to know him, and we're saying, I invite you in, it's not uh, like we hear in Sunday school a lot of times. You want to you, you receive Jesus in your heart? And then the kid gets a little, you know, Bobby's world picture of like, and Jesus is coming in and said, that's the degree many times we're stuck at is the little kid version of it. You're literally inviting the kingdom of God into you. His rule, his domain His ways of doing things, his character, all of a sudden gets unleashed in you. That's what we do when we come to know Christ. That's that beginning stage. A lot of times that's not explained because I think, you know, uh, I think there'd be maybe less people coming to the altar if I said it that way. Because when he sets up his kingdom, he's the king. And so what we're saying then at that point is we're about to give over our heart to the king who rules. He has the last say, the first say, the middle say. Amen. And I follow. Now, if the gospel was preached like that, and I'm very evangelistic, and I, I do preach it that way, but it does make people stop and think a little bit more be, before they go, well, do I want to get rid of the guilt that I have from doing what I did last night? <sighs> yeah, I guess so. I'll go up there and I'll receive Jesus. And it's almost like the picture is like, give me that ticket. Okay, I feel better. I feel, I feel so much better. That's different than when you receive Christ, you receive the kingdom. And he sets up in your heart and you've given over all rulership to him. So now going back to Mark chapter four, he's trying to tell us how the heart works when he goes to set up in it. Jesus is the word. He was the word. This is what first John says. He is the word. And, um, and so when the word is being sowed into us, it's, going in, and we then have a choice to let it, to allow it to set up the kingdom. How the kingdom operates comes through the word. How he's delivered us comes through the word. So let's just read a little bit here. And like, like I said, it could be a little repetition because you've, you've probably heard this part of the scripture before. He said, give attention, verse three, to this. Behold, a sower went out to sow. And as he was sowing, some seed fell along the path and the bird came and ate it up. Other seed of the same kind fell on the ground full of rocks where it had not much soil. And at once it sprang up because it had no depth of soil. Two different kinds of hearts already. And when the sun came up, it was scorched. And because it had not taken root, it withered away. Other seed of the same kind fell among thorn plants. It keeps describing different kinds of hearts and thistles 
bristles and grew and pressed together and utterly choked and suffocated it and yielded no grain. Now, I can tell you, if, uh, if, you know, sometimes I've read this in the past and I'm, I was trying to pick out which heart I had. And then I realized I have them all. Amen. Like, I got thorns, get out. I don't want the thorns. I, got, I, I have had times where an anointed word was preached and I went, oh, yes, and then it just got choked out. It was like as if I, I couldn't recall it the next week. Yeah, have you ever been to a dynamic service and someone says, well, what did uh, Pastor Vern preach on last week? Well, so it was like, I think he was talking about God and there was some, you know, <laughs> love him or something. I mean, you, it doesn't just go, yes, you know, when something's taken root, Amen. if that happens Amen. and what I do, if that doesn't happen right away, like I, I'm listening to a, a sermon right now from a man that I highly respect. I'm on the 10th time, 10th <laughs> time. I'm like, I, sometimes I'm mouthing what he's saying. I'm like, get in there. <laughs> Get in there and sick because I want to repeat what, he, what he's saying. I don't want to settle and go, oh, it's just going to get suffocated. Well, if there's something in my heart that's doing that, then I need to get the issue of that changed, the issue of the heart changed. Um, verse 8 says, And other seed of the same kind fell into good, well-adapted soil and brought forth grain growing up and increasing and yielding about 30 times as much, 60 times as much, and even 100 times as much as been sown. Now, when something of the anointing of the word when Christ, Christ is the word, the anointed one and his anointing is the word. When that comes in and it sets up in well-adapted soil, how would you know? You're going to see 30, 60, or a hundredfold. That it's a measurement. It's like if I listen to a sermon or I hear something or whatever and, and nothing gets produced out of that, I better look at the other hearts. Better look what's going on because there's something wrong. So here I am listening, 10th time. Who knows how many times I'm going to have to listen to this sermon. I used to uh, work for the post office in Colorado, and I had my own little Jeep. I miss my little Jeep. That's kind of cool. But, um, at, but I'd be driving around, and I'd be listening. Same thing, over and over. Now, I remember one went on for a month, and I was just like hitting my head like, why am I not retaining this? And I just began to just pray the whole time. God, change my heart. So this goes in. And it's not only anointed when it goes in, but suddenly I know it's anointed because it comes out. Yeah. And it produces 30, 60, and 100 fold. Yeah. yeah? So if we know the scripture, for instance, uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, right? And then he tells us to go into all the world. He gives us the great commission. Most of us had to memorize it, you know, kindergarten, Right? Where in your life has that produced 30, 60, or 100 fold? To just take something, a simple concept like that, and then say, Do I have 30, 60, 100 fold? Ugh. When we do that and we measure against the word, we can tell what kind of heart, what issues going on in the heart. Um, so here we are, and he says in the Amplified, well adapted soil. The adapted part means literally who you are receives the word and adapts to that seed. You got good soil, that soil right there is going to go, I have everything that I am, the good stuff, the bad stuff, or whatever, I'm giving up for the seed. The seed doesn't go in the ground, the ground just sits there like, don't bother me. You can sit there, but don't bother me. No, if that seed's going to grow, the seed gives up its nutrients. It gives up who it is. It gives over itself and dies to itself. Literally, the seed takes from the soil to produce. And so that's a picture of us giving up, allowing that part of our heart to be given over. That's well-adapted soil. So let's keep that in mind because we're, we're still haven't talked yet about the lake and going across the lake and the storms and things like this. But these are principles that as I lay this out today in the weeks to come, we're going to See new principles, and it'll tie back into here. So you got to know the story and, and how it goes. So then he says 30, 60, and 100 times as much has been sown. So it should produce that in us. And he said, he who has ears to hear, let him be hearing, and let him consider and comprehend. So here's the other part that's kind of a measuring thing, where if we hear something and we can uh, repeat it, doesn't necessarily mean we comprehend it. 
So you have to, you can't be running in pride and shame whatsoever when we're looking at this and getting the word in. Because if I do that, then I'll be like, oh, I got it. Pastor preached on that, I know. So-and-so preached on that, I, I've already heard that, I already know that. Can you comprehend it? Can you explain it to somebody else? Is it alive in you where it literally, you can't stop talking about it? There's so much comprehension that you're bringing even new concepts to it and it just keeps growing. It's 30, 60, and 100 fold is being produced in you. Yeah. See, that's, that's a measurement right there. Yeah. Um, so he says, if you have ears, which I think pretty much everybody here has ears, let him hear, let him be hearing. Well, you're like, I am hearing. I can hear Mary preaching right now. Are you hearing the anointing? Is this receiver grabbing the seed, holding on to it? This is a physical ear, your spiritual ear, holding on to it and bringing it down. And is the soil there well adapted? It goes, gotcha. I am going to give up everything of who I am to support this seed. And the Holy Spirit comes like a rain, the sun shines. And the next thing you know, 30, 60, and 100 fold come out of that. This is a principle he, he is looking for us to get. He's looking for America to get this. He's looking for the region to get this, our families to get this, our churches to get this. And as soon as he was alone, there were those around him, verse 10, where the 12 apostles began to ask about the parables. And he said to them, to you has been entrusted, like I trusted you, I just told you how the kingdom of God works, and I want you to know I trust you with it. I'm entrusting you with this. What are you going to do with it? He's giving us the mysteries of the kingdom of God. That is the secret counsels of God, which are hidden from the ungodly. So when, he, when the mysteries of the kingdom start working, it's not some flaky thing that's like off the wall, but at the same time, the ungodly don't get it. They're not seeing why you're so dedicated. They're not seeing the 30, 60, 100 fold. They're, not see, they're like, I don't get what you're talking about. But the counsels of the un, or, or the counsel of God comes to us, the secret counsels of God. These are things which are hidden from the ungodly, but for those outside of our circle, everything becomes a parable. That's really interesting how that was written, that he discloses and the anointing comes on certain people, right, when they're ready to receive that. Amen. Hallelujah. In order that they may indeed look and look but not see, and he goes and talks about that. I'm going to skip some things just for the sake of time. Um, and then he goes on and explains the parables, probably starting in verse 14. He's, he's wanting to, he's like, I want you to discern and understand all the parables. He says in verse 13, the sower sows the word. And he goes and he explains the different hearts. Um, and even verse 17, he talks about how the heart I'll just read this one. And they have no real root in themselves. And so they endure for a little while. Then when trouble of persecution arises on account of the word. So persecution can be persecution for just anything. And uh, the Bible says that we welcome persecution when it's for the gospel. We should rejoice when we're persecuted from the, for the gospel. Why? Because then we know the word's working. 30, 60, or 100 fold. If you're being persecuted just because somebody doesn't like your T-shirt, well, whatever, right? That's not the kind of persecution that this is talking about. Um, and so then when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, they immediately are offended, become displeased, indignant, resentful, and they stumble and fall away. That's just one of the things that happens when we don't have well-adapted soil and there's an issue in our heart going on. This is all still setting up for going across the lake here. Um, then he goes on, and we'll talk about some of these things probably in the, the weeks to come. He talks about sharing the word. And then verse 23, he says, If any man has ears to hear, there he goes again about your hearing. Because why? Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing the word of God. Amen. Right? And so here he is. If any man has ears to hear, let him be listening. Let him perceive and comprehend. If you're hearing, then you're going to perceive and comprehend. If I'm listening and I'm like, this is a good sermon, and I still don't get it, and I know I still don't get it, I got to go back and hear again. Because there's something about that pathway that needs to change. I got to listen. I got to hear. And then when I start to perceive it, I know it's by the Spirit, and I know I couldn't come up with this. 
because I didn't know before and now I know. And then it has stay power. It has stick power. And then, you know, if you, it, it's like putting the, the fire suit on before you go into the fire. That's always a nice concept. Rather than being in the fire, like, oh, what's the word on that? Right? It'd be better if the word took root in your heart and you always got something. Well, here's something right here. This is a part of me. This is, I got the suit on. You know, this is that. So we're supposed to be paying attention how we hear. And then he goes on in verse 26 and talks about another parable about scattering seed upon the ground. And that goes through all the way to verse 32, where he's talking about um, when the seed takes place, literally a huge tree will come up out of that, where you'll become like a tree where you'll shade other people. So 30, 60, and 100 fold. And then the next type of thing that happens is we're actually covering other people. We have influence. Influence. With, I mean, it, it's, this is where I just had somebody, oh man, I had more than some, somebody, quite a few people in the last few days because I've been ministering different places say, one lady just said, you're not going to pray the prayer, are you? I'm like, what prayer? You know how the Christians pray prayers over you? Same old prayers and they don't do anything. That was pretty truthful, right? right. I said, no, I try not to pray those prayers. <laughs> I said, you might not like how I pray because I'm not going to pray like that. And I'm saying that because um, we, can be, we can become in such a rut. You know, you, to get in a rut, you've got to be in a rote. Practice the same thing over and over. You start to sound very monotone, but it's all memorized and doesn't really mean anything, right? And then you're on that same rote, and you're doing the same thing over and over, and you get caught in a rut, and that's when you rot. That's when you rot. Yeah. Yeah, word up, right? All right, so, so here we are, and he's, he's just disclosed. So we're going through this because a lot of times people will take the scripture out, and when the Holy Spirit tells you to do that, you do it. But we hear these sermons many times where you take it out and you just talk about the hearts. These are different kind of hearts, so make sure you don't have that. Okay, that's nice, but this is a flow of a story. This, this whole thing counts together. And, um, and so here's how he's going to bring it. Now to the next point of the story. If you're watching this, you've got to kind of put, put it in uh, if you're watching this as a movie. All right? First part of the movie, they're sharing all these parables, and, and I'm, I'm entrusting you with the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Something big's going to happen. Okay, movie cuts off. It's time to go to bed. I mean, we don't, we don't uh, finish. When we get to see the middle part of the movie and then the end part of the movie, it puts everything together. And so that's what he's trying to do here. He then uh, says to them in verse 34, he did not tell them anything without a parable, but privately to his disciples, those who are peculiarly his own, he explained everything fully. So that tells me something also. That says we have to be in a spot where his ownership of us is so full that we peculiarly belong to him at a whole higher level. And suddenly, when he's sharing parables, we get it. Because we've given that much over of ourselves to him. To follow, to be obedient, to do as he says. And, and And we have all of that type of stuff going on. And it's interesting that he says, just privately... To his disciples, the disciplined ones, the, the ones who are peculiarly his own, he explained everything fully. So they got this at a higher level than the people that were thronging around there, like the scripture says. And on that same day, when evening has come, he said to them, verse 35, let us go over to the other side of the lake. Oh, second part of the movie. Now we're going to, they laid out the plot of how the kingdom works and everything. Well, where's this thing going? What good is the kingdom? What are we doing with the kingdom? And yet he's trying to train his disciples. So he makes sure he breaks it down. I want you to get this. You're going to get this. I'm going to break this down so you fully understand it. Right? So when God does that, something goes in your heart and it's not like, bling, I'm just so much better. Everything's just wonderful. When God reveals himself to us it hurts many times whenever i get a revelation of him i see how off i am you know a lot of churches don't teach that like let's come this morning get a revelation so we can go about ourselves 
right? We're like, no, everyone wants to feel good and it's going to be wonderful and happy, happy life. Well, there's a part to that. But when I'm truly happy is when I know when I'm off and it gets corrected. I'm like, yes, get this out because this is causing all kinds of problems. And when I know that's gone, it's like problems are solved. Now is when I rejoice, right? Hallelujah. And so here we are. And um, he's given them this. And then he just says, simple command, right? He's the master. Let's go across the lake. And leaving the throng, they took him with them as he was in the boat in which he was sitting and the other boats were with him. Another part of the story we, a lot of us have heard over and over. And a furious storm of wind of hurricane proportions arose. Now picture that in movie foam, right? I'm a visual. So if you're not, you might have a hard time. I'm like, I see it right here. Storm is going, slapping up against the boat. This is hurricane proportions. And the waves kept beating into the boat so that it already became filled. But he himself was in the stern of the boat, asleep on the leather cushion. And they woke him and said to him, Master, do you not care that we are perishing? And he arose and rebuked the wind and he said to the sea, hush now, be still, be muzzled. And the wind ceased, sank to rest as if exhausted by its beating. And there was immediately a great calm, a perfect peacefulness. And so we're going to go just that part of the story. So here they are. They just got disclosed the mysteries of the kingdom of God. So that is in their heart going, trying to divide things out because the word of God has its own inherent power and it goes in it's sharper than a two-edged sword and when it hits you and you've received it it divides things out suddenly you see things differently than you did before well they haven't had much dividing time here's like here's the mysteries let's go across the lake let's do this all right and the reason that that that's so important is not that you're just getting in the boat on the other side of the lake in the next chapter is the demoniac is the woman with the issue of blood so what he's literally saying is i'm going to give you the mysteries of the i'm entrusting you with it mysteries of the kingdom of god and then i'm going to take you to the impossible so you've got to get this we're going to the impossible And what's exciting about that is the fact that that's a higher level of ministry, right? If you see that at all, it's like, whoo, we're going to go there. You know, we got it. I mean, he disclosed to us. We know stuff other people don't know. And we can can get in that thought. And I'm following the master, so we're going to go across the lake. And whatever's next, I got it. And that's many times like when pride will come up um, because we, we know something now. We've got something now. But knowing it is different than it exploding in your heart, rearranging you, ruling those areas that are out of control, delivering you from things that don't belong there. That's totally different. That's when you know the seed is like, I'm growing. And all your soil is like, ah, and you're just giving yourself up to that seed. And the more you give up, the quicker that grows. The next thing you know, 30, 60, 100 fold, we're producing. So there's an excitement that goes with that. And we want, and all of us, we're like, whoa, we're going to the impossible, right? So (laughs) here they are, knowing some of the mysteries, knowing that there's going to be stuff going on in their heart. And what do they say when the storm breaks out? They're like, do you not care? Don't you care about us? The storm is here. Now here is these powerful preachers that are the disciplined ones that he takes to the side and he discloses, here we go. Now we're going to go across to a bigger ministry. And all of a sudden a storm breaks out and they're like, wussing out. (laughs) Say it the way it is. I've wussed out, so I know what that's like. (laughs) I, it was pretty wussy too when I did. And so, so they're going across the lake and they're looking to him and, and, and then this is your thought. Well, you were the one who asked us to go across the lake. That's our next thing that we do with God. You're the one who asked. I wouldn't be in this position if it wasn't for, I mean, because this is hurricane force winds were literally slapping up against the boat. One translation says the boat was beginning to sink. They were going to lose their lives. Now, did they see that the storm was coming? Let's just kind of go in the, in the movie once. These are fishermen, right? And if you, if you see kind of pictures of the lake that they were crossing, whatever, it's not like, you know, there's so many trees and mountains you can't see if there's a storm coming. Sky's clear. 
going across the lake. It all looks good. Jesus said, let's go. And suddenly, suddenly the storm rises up. Isn't that just how the devil works? Yeah, you're like thinking, this is going to be awesome, man. Did you see the throngs of people? I mean, we are following the masters. We're the ones in the boat with him. Huh? And, and what's interesting um, prophetically is if you take this across the region, uh, certain parts of the scripture indicate they were in one boat and there were other boats following across. So other people or other ministries, you could say in the prophetic, were crossing too. And here they are, there with Jesus, and the whining starts. And he's sleeping. Why is he sleeping? Peace. And how does he have peace? He has no heart issues. He is the kingdom. He has no heart issues. So there's no fear in him. There's no, and he's sleeping. He's like, all right, storm's going on. It's a very physical thing. You know, and they're like, how could you do this? You've left him here. You don't care that we are perishing. (laughs) And he arose and he rebuked the wind and said to the sea, hush now, be still, be muzzled. Now, here we are in in, in times that I've wussed out. I mean, what do you do? You cry out to Jesus just like they did. It'd probably be more mature to cry out to him by saying, God, I need your help because I don't know what I'm doing. Then it would be, how come you're not here for me? You're the one who asked me to be in this ministry. How could you? Blah, 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 blah. But that's where we usually go first. But there's a difference. There's a difference when we go and we awake the heavens. We cry out like the Bible says. We bring our petitions before the Lord. And literally what we're saying when we do that is we're saying what he already said. We're not praying the prayers like, there's a storm, God, have mercy, help. And we're not praying that prayer. We're like, you know what? You said. You said for us to go across the lake. You were the one who called us, so then you're the one who will equip us. I'm reminding you of your word. You said this scripture. You said that scripture. That's how our prayers sound different, right? Yeah. Well, the areas in my heart that praise like that are more well-adapted soil. And I can always see when there's some kind of tragic thing or some kind of thing that feels like tragedy to me and no one else would freak out over it. (laughs) Um, I can always see where I don't have well-adapted soil. It's the area I don't want to sell out to him. It's the area I don't want to give up who I am. It's that area. that, And then my prayers look like that. Either I say nothing or I'm whining. Then, then you're like, so what kind of heart is that? We're like, it's fine. It's just fine. I'm believing in God right now. I'm just a little upset. No, you're not. And there's something going on with your heart. And the word that's already been sown about faith, it's been stolen from you. Go get it again. Say, God, sow into me again, and I'm going to get it. And this soil is going to adapt around it. If I have to push and shove or do whatever I've got to do, but if I have to just fall on the rock and be broken... So this soil crumbles up instead of being hard and I fall on the rock and I'm broken and it crumbles into nice adaptable soil and then the seed. I can embrace the seed with everything I've got. Less of grain of seed falls in the ground and dies, it abides alone. When it falls into the ground, the ground, when Christ falls into us, that ground should adapt. If it doesn't, it's almost like it's rejecting the seed. So what we do, this is where the spirit of religion is. The spirit of religion hears it and says it received it because it memorized it here. But it has nothing to do with here. But you know it, but it's not in you. But you think it's in you because you know it, but you don't know it. You don't comprehend it and perceive it. You don't get how it works and changes. There's no excitement around it, but you know it. You can quote it, right? So... He is taking the body of Christ right now. He is taking America through this. There has been so much seed. We are educated way beyond our obedience. Way beyond our obedience. There's so much. You can access it all day long if you want to. You can just sit there and just listen to word, 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 word. Um, And so if we have that much seed, where's the 30, 60, 100? 
And then just to be really honest, because I'm that kind of person who's kind of blunt, because um, I like to be blunt with myself too. If I'm producing, I want to see it. Where is it? And I look at something, I'm like, like I could make a big old deal of what's going on in my life right now and be like, that's got to be at least a hundredfold. What's going on in my life right now is lame compared to what the kingdom wants to go on. It's lame. So I'm not going to posture myself like that. I want more. I get up every day. I want more. No, more. Show me how to produce. I'm not that good of a farmer yet here. Apparently, I need this to to go. I need to have that well-adapted soil. So he's taking the nation through this process of here is the word. And then he tells us, let's go across the lake to the impossible. And churches are dropping off like crazy. People are turning their boats around. The first sign of a storm, they see a cloud. I'm out. I am out. We're not doing this. This would require the supernatural to get across the lake. This would require some some places and some hearts would literally say, oh, no, 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 we had a nice thing going. We got like a good old boys club here or, you know, the good old chick club and in a church and we kind of run the place and we've got that going on. And now you're asking us to cross the lake. There's water out there. That could be dangerous. They won't even get in the boat. Let alone as soon as the first cloud comes, uh, I'm out. I'll swim back to shore if I have to because it's going to require something of me. This is why Jesus laid out these parables to begin with. You don't think he knew the storm was coming? You don't think he perceived that? He's like, let's see what they do in their hearts. Because if they're his disciples and he's the master and they're the disciplined ones, how as a master, if I was a master um, or or a person who who had leadership going to lead some people, you don't set up things to torture them, but you use the things that are there to say, I wonder how they're going to handle that. You should do that with your kids. Don't come in and rescue for everything, right? You lay out the principles. This is how it works. This is how you love your brother. This is how you whatever. And then you watch. Yeah, that didn't go well. (laughs) Still got some stuff in their heart. We're going to have to train. We're going to have to come alongside. We're going to have to discipline. We're going to have to do that. Well, so here he is in that same thing. America is in that spot right now. There's a whole lot of freaking out going on. There's a whole lot of whining. There's a whole like, but don't take this from us. And blah, blah, blah. and selfishness is rampant. Yeah. Yeah. And why is that coming out? Because we are so blessed. Yeah. We are so blessed to have gotten the gospel and see the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Even the people who don't know the mysteries of the kingdom are living in a land that the mysteries of the kingdom of God established. So they're being affected by that anointing and they don't even know what's hitting them. So then it requires something of them. And here comes the whining. Here comes the way. If there, if there really was a God, why are there wars? If there really was a God, I, don't, I think we all come from aliens and all the junk that's out there right now. What that is, is the pressures of this life now have come and Jesus is sitting back saying, how are you going to handle that one? Where's your heart at? What's going on in your heart? He wants us to produce the 30, 60, and 100 fold. So here's what he turns and does. Now, he muzzles the storm. So we cry out to Jesus, and in the name of Jesus, we can shut some things down. Right? You can shut some things down. But you still have to deal with what happened. Uh, That's where sometimes we like to be like, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. I don't accept that. I don't receive. Well, sometimes we can do that in faith and other times we're doing that to disassociate from dealing with what we need to deal with. That's what America does. So if America's doing it, good old America, um, it's happening in our region. It's happening in our families. It's happening in us. This country was called to preach the gospel to the world, to fund the preaching of the gospel to the world. You can go back in history, hear quotes about things like that. They established this place, and then their dream was, once this is established, we're going to send. We're going to be the senders. We're going to be the senders. That's how, just for us to to step in and, and help John and Santa, is us stepping into that anointing that's been here that established our country. It's like, yep, we have the power to do that. 
They don't have the power to do that in every country, in every home. We have that anointing. We have that gifting. We have that power. And so here he, he goes. He deals with shutting it up first, right? He, he, one scripture actually says shut up in one translation. The other one says hush now, be still, be muzzled, silencia, <laughs> whatever way you want to say it, be quiet, stop. And he does that. That was like no big deal to him. That, that wasn't even the point to him. And a lot of times we've preached that like, and then he calmed the storm. Oh, our Jesus, he's so powerful. Well, he was part of creating this world. So now the storm thing is actually a little, little tiny thing, you know, on the side here. And the world is a whole lot bigger thing. So that's not the big point here that we should dwell on. It's the next verses that we should dwell on. Verse 40. And he said to them, why are you so timid and fearful? How is it you have no faith? No firmly relying trust. Now, he didn't at that point, here's the master, he didn't at that point go, whoo, glad we calmed that baby down. Are you guys okay? I'm like, are you all right? Did you hit your head? You know, oh, your clothes are soaked. Are you cold? Oh, come here. Come here. Oh, man. He didn't do any of that. It's going to be all right. Maybe we should just sit here a while and not go across the lake because I can see you guys are upset. <laughs> he didn't do that. He didn't. In that time, we look for that, though. Come on, I've been crying for like two hours. My eyes are swollen. I'm halfway puked. Come on. You know, and we're in that state where we really want him to react and do something. And now that he came in and calmed something, <laughs> give us our blanket. That's an issue in our heart when we're doing that. You know, he's not going to give you a nook and a blanket and just sit over here. I'll, I'll steer the boat over because you guys, I mean, you've been roughed up and I'm pretty calm about it. He didn't do that. He looks him in the eye like a good father would. Why are you so timid and afraid? You know why he's asking that question? Not because of the storm, because he already gave them the mysteries of the kingdom. So he's holding them accountable to the word that went in. And he's like, I thought I told you the kingdom works like this. Now, we're gonna, that's going to magnify you being able to see why you freaked out. Which one of those hearts did you have? Did everybody freak out the same on the way over? Because we might want to divide that out before we get to the demoniac. Um, there's something about a respect in the anointing um, that I think has been lost in a, in a lot of places and and we're working on not losing that here. Um, where, when the anointing's moving, the anointing comes first, right? When the power of God comes first. Not my flesh, not if I got to get a drink right now or whatever. It's like the anointing's moving right now. It comes first. And a lot of times we'll, we'll look at like, oh, there's, there's somebody over there and they're manifesting demonically, uh, you know, our church cast demon out or our whatever. And we take that lightly almost. Uh, we'll take it lightly most of the time, especially if it's someone else praying over that person. Oh, yeah, you cast that demon out. You go for it. Yeah, yeah. We were part of that. Yeah, praise God. I, I attend this church or whatever. Until God asks you to do it. And somebody's laying on the floor. Ah, right? Until God asks you to do it. When the anointing's moving Literally, that's Christ moving, the anointed one and his anointing. The power of God is moving, and there should be an awe and a respect. And a, whoa. So what happens is if I, uh, I would have presented, I, I've done this. I've presented, like, who wants to go street with, with me Friday night? I've done this. I did this in Colorado. Who wants to go? Oh, yeah, Pastor Mary. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going across the lake to do it. Our first response usually is like, yeah, 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 because Pastor Mary, she'll lead the way, and she'll go, and then we'll just kind of follow behind. And, and that's what I found what happened out on the streets. People scattered. They'd come out one time and never show up again. There's an issue in the heart when that happens. There is, a, there, there is we get excited about, let's go, let's go save the demoniac. This is a man in the next chapter talks about this is a man they they couldn't even keep handcuffs on him. The demons in him were so powerfully manifesting that they just 
put him over here by himself because nobody could deal with him. And really what they said when they said that is, that's impossible. Everybody stay away from there because that, that man, he's impossible. God has asked us to do what he's done and greater things. So we're still working. Most of us are still working on what he's done. We haven't gotten anywhere near the greater things. Oh, we want to just be blunt honest, right? And, and so we'll get excited about taking something on. And, and it'll be like, yeah, let's go help the demoniac. Just know that when you do that, you don't go looking for a storm, but you better be prepared for one. You don't call a storm into existence. Well, I know it's coming. I know the devil will be after us because we're trying to minister. No, but you go confidently ready that anything can happen. And I'm ready with the word because it's well-adapted soil that has held on to what he has said and come hell or high water, I am going across this lake. And I'm with the master and I'm going to be obedient to him and I'm going to speak the word with him and I don't care what my body feels about fear, trembling, the storm looks like it's going to take the boat. I might be freaking out in my emotions, but my heart is with the master. He had mercy on them by sharing about the hearts to begin with and then holding them accountable. See, if you, if you have a pastor, a leader, a mentor, and they share something with you and you go through something and then they hold you accountable, that's love. That's love. These guys could have said, I am done. I'm not going with you. I, I'm, there's a boat over there turning around. Just let me off. I'm going to swim over and, uh, and I'll go. But he disclosed to them how the kingdom works. They were holding on to the mysteries of the kingdom. And they had that choice to make. How they know another thing wasn't going to happen before they got there? Why are you so fearful, timid? What's the problem, Bob? Hmm? Yeah? He wants to do that. And I have learned to embrace that. That is the adapted soil that he shares with me. And then when I go through the storm, I am learning more and more. I don't have it down, but I'm working on it. To just go with the thing and say, Take all of me. Take all of me. Just take, take the whole thing. And you know what? And when you want to ask me why I'm so timid and fearful, I will tell you, God. I'm broken in this area. And this pain or this trauma came up, and this is scaring me right now. I want this gone. So if you, don't, if you feel the trauma, if you feel the fear, if you feel all that, then a lot of times what we do is that's all the farther we go and we blame the game on him for asking us to go across the lake to begin with. When he's bringing us through a process, it doesn't say he caused the storm. The storm happened. Yeah. Suddenly, here comes the storm. And, and yet he said, I'll, I'll walk you through this. But no, I want you to grow in your heart. So why are you so timid and afraid? What's going on inside of you? And as we'll be learning in the weeks to come, when we're timid and afraid, we will not say the word. Our saying to this mountain shuts down and worry takes over. We're going to take that apart probably next week and show how worry starts with a trauma and goes to a crisis and, and it builds in you. And literally, they've physically proven it. Doctors have physically proven how it can set up even in your cells and cause sickness. But at this time, I really wanted to make sure that everybody, everybody knows you might think that the storm you're going through is so unique to you. Uh, my friend, we should just start disclosing right here. Has anybody gone through a storm in the last six months? And I'll tell you, I have had so many telephone calls. And so it's like, whoa, there's a bigger one than the last one I've gone through. That was a pretty big one. Well, no, the hope that is in Christ is what's across the way. Amen. I'm going to the impossible. Instead of looking at it like, Lord, just show me how this is possible because I want to go to something because I just need to be comfortable. And if we're going across the, the, the way and I get to that island and, and you just have comforted me, I'll be so comfortable when I'm there and, and then I'll know your peace and I'll know your joy and I'll know your love. We, we have that. That's a trick. That's a trick. When joy comes on us is when we come through the storm and we're like in the impossible. And we're like, are oh, you got to be kidding me? This is now happening. 
this demoniac is really freaking out in front of me. And Jesus is handling it this way. The power of God is moving. I can rejoice in this. Woo! There's a different kind of joy than that. They make me all comfortable. See, this is the shaking that's going on in America, and it's happening to the church. He doesn't go to all the Americans and say, let me shake this whole land. He's shaking the churches. We are the light. We're the salt. Who Many have lost their saltiness. There's a shaking going on. Sometimes you feel the ground moving, right? And, and in that shaking, he's literally sifting us, and he's taking away any of the chaff that needs to go. Let it go. Stop holding on to just let it go. Drop it is what the scripture says. Um, and, and one portion I'll be dealing with here in the next couple weeks when he talks about the power of God. And then he says, if you stand therefore and you have, you know, ought in your heart against somebody, the Amplified says, before you can even pray, go drop it. That's how it says it. Just drop it. It's not like I'm slowly letting go and I'm slowly kind of forgiving and I'm sort of, I'm working through this. It's like, drop it now. Just drop it. Because if you want the power of God moving through you, you want a heart change, you cannot hold on to this junk. Because when the wind of the Spirit blows and He separates you, the chaff and the wheat, that gets separated and you hold on, that's a pretty rough ride. Yeah? You ever been on a roller coaster you didn't want to be on? Felicia and I, it was a big one too. And Felicia and I let, when I was younger, I liked this kind of thing. But now anymore, I'm like, oh, okay, no, my stomach's up in my throat. And, but we let somebody talk us into getting on this roller coaster. And even as we were going, like, we probably shouldn't be doing this. Well, maybe, well, it's okay. We probably, then, we, then they buckle you in. You can't, like, get out. So you're like, I guess we're, do, we're doing this. I guess we're doing this. And I just remember getting off that thing. Even my legs were, were just shaking. You could fight it when you're on there. You see the people are fighting, ah, you know, freaking out and all your adrenaline's going up or you can just breathe differently and let it happen. Yeah. yeah. So to begin with, I'm like, ah, and then all of a sudden, okay, all right, I'm just going to breathe differently because you can pass out doing something, you know, and I was the one in high school. I'm like, I can't wait when I get older. I'm going to hang glide and all this. And I got, I have changed. I don't know. I don't know where that went. If I fell down too many times or what, but it's like, no, I'm okay. I'm all right. Um, so he's wanting to take his church through the storm, and we cry out to him. He will shut down different things, right? But then he's turning to us. Why do you think he's asking us if we're timid and afraid? He's asking us so we can see ourselves. He's asking us so that our heart can change. Why? Just so we can go, well, good job. Now Susan's heart has changed. That's really good. Next time she won't be afraid. No, he's looking for an army. He's sorting out an army that can literally be on a boat that's being tossed back and forth. The sail goes flying off. The water's coming in. You're holding on to each other. And all you see is the other side of the lake. We're going there. That's what he's trying to produce in us. He's going to take the storms of what's going on in the government, the storms of the threats of ISIS, all of those kinds of things, and he's looking for the people who will stand. Right? Yeah, it's very hard. It's very hard when there's a storm. I've described before, um, other thing that happens with me is if I'm on a boat in the middle of the ocean, going back and forth, I turn a little green. And uh, we we had a trip where, with Joe and Doreen where we went out and, and I didn't take anything for, you know, seasickness or anything like that. I'm like, it can't be that bad. And I don't even know if it was that bad. I think it was just me. I don't know. I threw up all day that we were out there. I literally, and you know, they're not going to turn around like, oh, she's throwing up. We're going to go back now. No, you paid for the trip. You're doing the trip, throwing up or not. And so, and, and so I remember taking pictures of dolphins, right? So I'm laying there, blah, and then I'm like, snap, snap, and oh, blah, 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 oh, there's another one, you know, and doing the whole thing. And you literally, in your head, you think you're going to die. Has anybody been in that spot, or is this just unique to me? Your, your brain, your, your body starts to say, yeah, we ain't going to make this one. You're like going down. And uh, you can't find a comfortable spot. There's no, you know, nothing um, that's happening. Well, they were tossed back and forth. And these, some of them were fishermen, so they're used to some of that. But you know they knew hurricane force winds. They could predict, like, we ain't going to make this one. The fear that was there to grip their heart. 
Why are you so timid and fearful? Opposite of timid is bold. Bold. You have a doctor look at you and tell you something terrible. You can go, (gasps) or you can go bold. Right? You, You have somebody tell you about your finances. That bill doesn't get paid by such and such. Blah, blah, blah. You can go fearful or you can go bold. You can picture yourself on that boat where you stand up and it's going back and forth and you find a way to plant and you hold on, right? I ain't getting tossed into the sea and you plant and you say, and you're not looking at this. You're looking, where is that other side of the lake? That's where we're going. We're going to the other side of the lake. Where is it? I'm looking for it. I'm looking for it. And it's interesting how it manifests and the joy that you have just seeing it off in the distance. There's an island there. Oh my goodness, it's starting to appear. Ah, I look to the hills. Where does my help come from? It comes from the Lord. I can see I'm looking up. I'm looking up. I'm not looking at this going back and forth. Not going to do it. He's trying to get America to that point. So this is how we sound uh, when we haven't settled things in our heart. I don't know who I'm going to vote for. You know, the whole thing's falling apart. I don't see where there's anything we can do. We're just going to wait. Got to wait this one out. It's like waiting out a storm. What? Muzzle that puppy. Muzzle it. Stand up. Face it. He's trying to take us somewhere. But if we passively aren't really doing anything, blah, blah, blah. And we do that um, in churches. Literally, the storms that have happened in churches have gone from making us sick that we've been on that boat so long and not have come out because faith brings you out that the church has fallen asleep on the boat. It's a different kind of sleep. It's not a peace sleep. It's like, well, we're just going to accept this is the will of God. And, you know, storms like this, they can go on all your life. And the suffering it's, it's probably because I deserve it and he wants to teach me something. And what good are you to the kingdom? God does not take pleasure in it. Let's torture the people in such a way that they are just no hope and they'll be nonproductive. That'll be a good idea. Won't that be a good idea? He does not work like that. He's like, I will muzzle this for you, but you need to face your heart. Why were you so timid and afraid? And you know what's interesting, too, when we're feeling the best and, like, we're strutting our stuff, you know, like, it's a good day, it's a good week, and there's a suddenly that happens, that is when we first see ourselves like, we've never, I never knew that. I never knew I'd freak out in that situation. Because you're not thinking about that. It's a suddenly. You're not thinking, oh, here comes the storm. You're just going, we're going across the lake. This is beautiful. And when a suddenly comes, it will challenge your heart right now. Right now, you got to have an answer right now. Because if you don't discern what's going on in the heart, then you see when you go across to where the demoniac is, are you really ready? This is where people get themselves into situations where, you know, they're... They think their britches are pretty big and they're going and they're going to cast a demon out of somebody and they get with somebody that's really got some intense stuff going on and the next thing you know, they're attacked. They weren't ready. They weren't ready. I would rather know what's going on in my heart and count the cost before I go to war, know my strengths and know my weaknesses. Because if I knew, you know, that a storm can come at any time, I will know then uh, this is my area where I get timid. That's the thing I need to work on then. That's the thing we say, then the word needs to be applied to that. I better go get me some of that. Yeah? But what we do, and this is kind of a weakness, um, it kind of feeds our flesh, is we keep feeding the strongest area that we have. Now see, this is my strong area. Doesn't it look good? Look at that. Give it some more. Look at that. That thing is just growing like crazy. And we'll feed that. And it's like, oh, that little thing over there where we're timid, it's not going to bother. That's the thing that can kill you. So yes, keep feeding and keep that thing growing, but turn on that timid area and say, oh, no, 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 no. What are you going to do with elections? What are you going to do praying for our country? How are you going to face what's going on in your family? How are you going to do that? 
Timidity and fear will cause you to freeze and you'll have nothing to say. Then that would be the thing I'd deal with. That's what we're going to deal with next week. We're going to deal with how worry will shut down your faith and you have nothing to say. That's why a lot of times we'll, we'll say in church, we'll like, let's pray. And there's like, you can have 300 people and there's like five people who pray. Everyone else. I'm not picking on anybody, I'm just saying. Well, what you got to say? Nothing really. I'm just, you know, in agreement with you. You got nothing to say about this? You got nothing to speak into when someone needs healing? You got nothing to say? There's something timid there. There's something fearful that I would shore up because you always should have something to say. There's something in the word that we need to repeat. Yeah? Yeah? Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. So when they get across there, my name is Legion, for we are many is what they're facing. For we are many. That's the impossible. In our earthly standards, that was the impossible. The next um, portion of scripture in chapter 5 talks about the woman with the issue of blood, right? Twelve years. She spent all of her money. She gave everything away. Pretty much the doctors were like, you're impossible. Nothing we can do for you. You're, you're impossible. Run along. You have to go find a place to die. That's just being blunt, but that's kind of what they treated her like. Jesus, when he got across the lake, the disciples were watching this really close and how he handled those different things. They had to measure that in their heart as the kingdom was moving and weeding out their timidity and their fear. They saw him with no fear. They saw him move on these different things. And healings took place. So many that scripture indicates that like where, where they, they need to write a whole book, right? Just because there's so many miracles. So today my question for you is the same question as a measurement that Jesus asked them. Because I don't have to say, do you have a storm? <laughs> We are living here on this dump place of earth, right? Yeah. You know, it's like I said, after I, I got the diagnosis, some of you heard me say this, um, what doctors felt for me or whatever. Um, you, you hear people when they, when they get something intense, you know, the flowers are brighter. Things are all beautiful, and they're like embracing everything. Smell every rose. It's just wonderful. I don't have that. We're driving home from the hospital. I'm like, man, this place is a dump. This is rusted out. Look at oh, that's falling apart over there. This is not our home. Amen. This is not our home. We have a home that's far greater, but we are here for a purpose. And if we embrace this home so much, like it's so, every rose is so, whatever, we forget the purpose we're here. Yeah. No, this place is a storm. Yeah. 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 And there's sometimes we're going to have to walk on water. And there's sometimes we're going to have to muzzle it. And there's other times that we're going to have to say into mountains and move this place around. Amen. Yeah? So I don't have to ask you, where's your storm? You already know what it's regarding finances, health, whatever it is. Why are you so timid and afraid? Why are you so timid? Timid is quiet. Timid doesn't have much to say. Timid can be so broken, you just sit and wait for stuff to happen. Timid isolates. Why are you so timid? Why are we afraid? Here's the thought. Think about this. You ever comfort somebody and they say, and I've said this, <laughs> I know, and you say, don't be afraid. I'm trying not to. We use the word try. When you try to do something, there's a good chance that it'll work, but there's also a good chance that it won't. So the concept is not true faith because you're trying it. Like people will say, well, I tried God. No, actually, the word of God tried you and you came up short. <laughs> Just being blunt, Right? And because we have to get this thinking off of us. So that's what I'm speaking and to get off of us. So we think things different. I'm not trying to not be afraid. I shall not be afraid. I am not afraid. I fear not. See, that's a different way of talking. 
But you have to come out of timidity to do that. You have to be loosed in your mouth to be able to do that. It doesn't matter how much you have the gift to talk. If it don't come up from your heart, there's nothing there, which goes back to the parable to begin with. Where is the seed? Is your soil adaptable? God wants this for America, but he's doing this for each church. I'm seeing this because I'm traveling to different churches. I'm seeing it in the region. We're talking to other pastors who travel. And it's like, wow, this same thing is happening everywhere. When he gave me this concept, it, it was months ago. And just to see it play out, it's like, and other pastors are using the same term. It's like we're in a storm. It's like there's something going on here. Well, he's doing that. So don't take it prophetically like this is unique to you. But you have to deal with your unique self where you're afraid to be a part of the bigger picture and get America standing up on its feet. Again, we always say the the home of the brave, right? Courage. Why are you so timid and afraid? Kind of two different Two different deals. We like to put it out there like, actually what we're really saying, there's a lot of people who had courage, but I'm going to stay over here. (laughs) Thank you for buying our country for us. Just hope it doesn't go away. You know, no, he is causing, you know, Oral Roberts had seen that um, vision years and years ago of the church arising, the sleeping giant. And literally as it came up, demons were jumping off of the parts of the body and stuff because it had been sleeping. He is awakening us. In the storm. We're getting slapped around. Yeah, wake up. There's a storm going on. We can't disassociate from. So why are we so timid and afraid? God is going to, in the next few weeks, set us differently so that by the time we're done, we're going to go back, if, if we get the opportunity to do this, to the words he's already given us, the prophecies he's already spoke to us. And even if you weren't a part of Word of Life, he told you something that slowly led you down the same path that got you here. And you'll be amazed at how they will correlate. Yep. Yes, they will. You'll be like, that's what he told me. Once we start going through that, because he wants us to bring to remembrance. Now, where did you tell us to go? Cross the lake. And these are all the things I told you to do. I told you to go to Red Lake. I told you to do this. I told you to pray for this. I told you to be about the generations. I told, he wants us to do that. But the storm will make us forget his command if we're timid and afraid. No fear. Amen. Amen. No fear. In Jesus' name. The Lord gave me something here. Uh, it's, it's verse 35 and 36 of what she already read. On the same day when evening had come, he said to them, let us go over to the other side of the lake. And leaving the throng, they took him, speaking of Jesus, with them, just as he was in the boat in which he was sitting. So they just started from the boat and started going across. And other boats were with him. Now, she referred to that. Did the other boats get to the other side? There's no evidence any boat made it but one. And he gave me two phrases ongoing storms and reoccurring Hmm. storms some of us have had a storm going on in our life so long it's not like we don't believe in jesus anymore we just don't think we'll ever get to where the impossible will ever happen for us and we turned around and went back or reoccurring storms it's like you think you you got it and then all of a sudden oop same old problem. Here it is. A marriage problem, health problem, financial problem. Yep, here it is, and it, it's blowing again. A storm is just opposition. And, folks, any time God tells us to, he, he lights something up in us and says, that's for you. Go for it. There will be a storm that will hit you. Now, the thing about what's going on now is it just seems to be so prevalent and widespread, and so many people are getting hit all at once. Mm-hmm. But this is normal ministry stuff. This is normal spiritual growth stuff. When God shows you something and it's like, this promise is for you, you can grow in this, the next thing, see, he's trying to take you to something that's impossible right where you're at. It's where you're at, and he says, okay, here's what I've got for you. Well, it's impossible where you're at, but he wants to take you there. Well, in the process of getting there, you're going to have a storm. There's going to be opposition 
to stop you from getting there. It could be your husband's going to lose his temper and he's going to mouth you off and you're just going to get, oh, I'm not going through this again. You're just going to quit, turn the boat around, go back. I still believe in Jesus, but that impossible that God promised me, it'll never happen anyway. Mm-hmm. And the storm yeah. shut you down. It, it could be anything, but you'll always hit a storm. Some of us have turned the boat around. We've, we've quit believing what she just said. Yeah. There were words over you. There were promises given to you. There were things God showed to you. And the opposition came, and it's like, well, I thought if God was in it, it was going to be easy. Well, God's not in the storm. That's the enemy we're living with in this ugly earth. Mm-hmm. And we've got to get through that. And you might be the only one who's going to stick with it and get through that storm, get to the other side. Yeah. But you can't turn the boat around. You can't back away. The moment you turn that boat around, back away. The moment you give up. Your heart will be hardened. Yeah. You just lost the impossible that God wanted yeah. to give to you in your life. Well, I hear about all these things that God did in other people's lives. And for me, whenever I believe for something, it just seems like my life falls apart. That's the storm that you have to get through so he can do in you what you hear he's done in others. And if you'll ask them, they will tell you, yes, God told us this is what he had for us, and all hell broke loose. And we had to get through that, determined we're not backing up. Yeah. And once we got through it, yeah. yep, there it was, yeah. just like yes. God told us. Yeah. But some of us have faced so many reoccurring storms, the same thing, over Where's and over, just seen over and over, and or it's just been such an ongoing, long, drawn out, it's just continual, I, I'm, I'm just dying on the vine here. I think God wants specifically to have prayer over those. Yeah.